like to start off this lecture by talking about refrigeration theory. We need to find out why things are working with refrigeration, why HVAC works, and how we cool buildings. But let's start off with some basic terms. Heat, okay, the warm, the cold, the feeling you get. Heat is a form of energy. Refrigeration is the process of removing that heat from a space. We want to take some some place that we don't want it and put it to a place where it's less of a problem. For example, inside an ice box to outside the building. A BTU is the British Thermal Unit. It's the conventional measurement of heat. Everything you do will be related to BTUs. BTU is defined as the amount of heat that's required to raise or lower the temperature of one pound of water, one degree Fahrenheit. Substances other than water require different amounts of BTUs. So for example, in this diagram, we're heating one pound of water using the flame underneath from 68 degrees to 69 degrees. Now, notice I'm saying one pound, not one gallon. There's 8.33 pounds of water to one gallon. Thermodynamics. It's the law, the law of thermodynamics state that heat will always travel from a warmer to cooler area, and we're going to talk more about this in the next lesson. Pressure. Standard atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch at absolute. This number is pounds per square inch absolute pressure. It's not what you're going to read on your gauges. Refrigeration gauges are calibrated to zero PSIG, and again, PSIG is gauge pressure. So at zero PSIG, it's the 14.7 atmospheric pressure. Vacuums are pressures below atmospheric pressure. So we start with 29.92 inches of vacuum at atmospheric pressure. You notice the mercury is all the way up near the top of the tube. We put it under a dome, remove, add, remove air from the dome using a vacuum pump, and the pressure will drop to the bottom. That's a vacuum. Pressure is defined as a, units per, as a force per unit of area. It's normally defined in pounds per square inch. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere on an object at sea level. So if we take this, if we take this jug, this picture here, we have one pound being exerted over on one inch of area on the left. On the right one, we have more pressure. We still have our one inch of area at the base, but we have 100 pounds exerting pressure down. So the right picture would be 100 pounds per square inch. The left picture would be one pound per square inch. Okay, A compound gauge is a gauge that can read above and below atmospheric pressure. On the manifold sets, when you use your refrigeration gauges, that's going to be the low side gauge or the one on the left. Above atmospheric pressure, these gauges read in, inch, in pounds per square inch. Below atmospheric pressure, these gauges will read in inches of mercury. And here's an example of the compound gauge. The left one you see has some lines that are in red that go down below zero. That's inches of mercury. Now, sensible heat is a change in temperature that you can measure with an ordinary thermometer. In other words, if you're standing in a room and you're looking at the thermostat, the sensible heat goes from 70 to 75 degrees. Your sensible heat change is 5 degrees. Again, sensible heat is heat you can measure. Latent heat is heat that causes a change in state. For example, a substance going from a liquid to a vapor or from a liquid to a solid, that's a change in state. Latent heat you cannot measure. Change in state is the conversion of a substance from one form to another. You have water to ice, ice to water, water to steam, steam to water. Change in state is not a temperature change, it's a change in molecular structure. This example, we have, heat, we have water boiling at the left hand side at 212 degrees. It's hot water. We add some fire underneath it, some more heat. It's still 212 degrees, but what is going on is now we're dealing with a latent heat change and a change in state. We have 212 degrees water on the left. We have 212 degrees steam on the right. Change in state, not a change in temperature. 
This chart shows it pretty easily. We start off with ice over there on the left hand side. Okay, because at zero degrees, water is ice. We bring it up at 32 degrees. That's a sensible heat change. Now, the flat portion between numbers 2 and 3, we're melting that ice. It's still 32 degrees, but we're adding 144 BTUs of latent heat. Because the BTUs it takes to melt one pound of ice is 144 degrees, must be 144 BTUs must be added. Now, we want to take that up to we want to take that newly formed water from point 3 to point 4, okay, so we can convert it to steam. Water boils at 212 degrees. We have to add 180 BTUs of sensible heat to get from the 32 degree water to 212 degree water. Then, for each pound of water, we have to add 972 BTUs to do the state change of state from water to steam. And then you can start adding BTUs if you want to do more sensible heat to get higher temperature steam. That's change in state. Specific heat is the amount of BTUs it takes to raise w the temperature of one pound of any substance one degree. Specific heat of water is one. Specific heat of ice is 0.5. So you see it changes between substances. Ambient temperatures is the temperature of air that is around an object or a device. And back to specific heat for a second. You can see by this chart, and this chart is repeated in your books, that, for example, specific heat of aluminum is 0.224. Specific heat of ice is 0.504. So it's easier to change the temperature of aluminum than it is ice. Specific heat of water is 1. Specific heat of air is 0.24. And then you also have some other foodstuffs that you can work with, eggs, flour. But they all have different specific heat. And remember, specific heat is the amount of heat it takes to raise one pound of water or of any device or any substance, one degree Fahrenheit. Enthalpy is the total heat is that is around a substance. Okay, we take our specific heats, we take our latent heats, that is our enthalpy. Add it all together. Now, refrigeration has to be sized in one way. There has to be a standard measurement other than BTUs that um, we can use to size equipment. A refrigerating a ton is one of these ratings. A refrigeration rating that is calculated when BTUs are known. For example, one ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour. So if we remove 12,000 BTUs per hour of heat using a refrigerator, it is one ton of refrigeration. Compressor tonnage and horsepower are proportionally equal. One ton is one horsepower, roughly, or 12,000 BTUs per hour. Now, there's different types of refrigeration systems out there. High temperature refrigeration, like what you'd see in air conditioning, starts at about 45 degrees and ends at about 60 degrees. It's used in flower shops, candy storage, and AC. We don't want to go under freezing here. We really don't even want to get close. Medium temperature refrigeration starts at about 30 degrees, right below freezing, and ends at about 45 degrees. It's used in products such as dairy goods, beer, and wine coolers. There's a lot of products that will not freeze at 32 degrees. Remember, 32 degrees is the freezing point of water. Low temperature systems start at about 32 degrees and go on down from there. It's anything used in frozen foods such as ice, ice cream, meat storage. One of the things we have to worry about, and we're going to talk much more about this in the future, is low temperature refrigeration must have a defrost cycle. In other words, we have to get the ice off the refrigeration equipment inside the unit. A temperature pressure chart is a cross-reference between the temperatures, pressures, and boiling points of the refrigerants. Different refrigerants, just like different substances, boil at different temperatures. The temperature pressure chart will help you calculate this out. The temperature at which a substance changes state is dependent on its pressure. Lowering the pressure lowers the saturation or boiling point. Raising the pressure raises the saturation or boiling point. So in other words, I boil water 212 degrees at sea level. If I go to Denver, Colorado, where the air pressure is lower, there's going to be a slightly lower boiling point of that water. 
whereabouts if I put the water in a pressure vessel, for example a boiler, and I start heating that water, I may go a little bit above 212 degrees. There's a few methods of heat transfer we need to talk about. That's how heat moves from one area to another. Heat transfer by fluid or air movement is called convection. We use that in forced air in air conditioning systems. Conduction is a particle to particle transfer of heat. We use this in radiant heat. Radiation is the transfer of heat by rays. For example, sunlight is radiation. To find the total BTUs needed to cool a substance from one temperature to another without a change in state, you have to find the net weight of the substance. You have to find the the degree of temperature change. This is otherwise known as delta T. Whenever you see those symbols, delta, the Greek delta sign, and a T means change in temperature. And then you have to find the specific heat of the substance. The BTUs re that you have to move is the weight of the substance times the delta T times the specific heat. So for example, 500 pounds of cranberries from 70 degrees to 35 degrees our change in temperature, or the delta T, is 70 minus 35, which is 35. We take our weight, 500, times the 35, times the specific heat of cranberries, which is 0.91, and we come up with 15,925 BTUs. Grocery store takes in a 400 pounds of cucumbers and needs to cool them from 93 degree truck to the long term storage of 45 degrees. We take our 93 minus 48, 45 and we come up with a 48 degree delta T. We have our specific heat of cucumbers which is 0.93. So 400 times 48 times 0.93 is 17,856. We need to chill 500 gallons of water from 75 degrees to 35 degrees. Our specific heat of water is 1.0. Then we take our 75 minus 35 is 40. One gallon of water is 8.345 pounds, so we have 8.345 times 50 equals 417.25 is our weight now. We put it into our little chart or just line it up and multiply it. 417.25 times 40 times 1 is 16,690. So it takes 16,690 BTUs to cool 50 gallons of water from 75 degrees to 35 degrees. The only substance with a specific heat of 1 is water. It's what we call our reference substance. Everything else is based on either it heats faster or slower than water. To find the total BTUs needed to cool a substance from one temperature to another with a change of state, again, you find the net weight of the substance, find the degree of del temperature change, that's your delta T, find the specific heat of the substance, and find the latent heat of the substance. Find the temperature that the substance changes state, for example, 32 degrees for water, and you have to do it in stages. You have to calculate the number of BTUs prior to the change in state, the number of BTUs after the change in state, the number of BTUs for the state change, and then you arrange them all together for total BTUs needed. For example, a warehouse gets 100 pounds of celery, it is delivered at 70 degrees, it needs to be cooled to negative 10 degrees for long-term storage. How many BTUs are needed? You go from 70 to 29.7, which is the freezing point of salary. Then you do a latent heat change. Then you go from 29.7 to negative 10. Two areas of sensible heat change, 70 to 29.7 is 40.3 degrees. 29.7 to negative 10 is 39.7 degrees. Remember, when you have two minus signs together, add the numbers. The latent heat is 135 BTUs per pound. So we put it all in our chart. We multiply each row across and then add the totals. And we come up with 19,234.1 BTUs to cool celery from 70 to negative 10 degrees. Notice, some substances have different sensible heats above and below freezing points. And we are all set with this. Go on and do your um, assignments for this portion, and then move on.
and check the next dev lesson.